How's it going? Jake again with Bond Performance. Just wanted to give my review of the IS38 I installed and go over some of the pros and cons versus stage two and my experiences with that. So first off, uh, the car's got 93,200 miles on it now. And uh, as I've mentioned in other videos, previous videos, it's been APR stage one and then stage two tuned for the majority of that since before its first oil change when I bought it new in December 2015. It was probably early um, 2016 when I had it tuned originally. So I got really used to the power delivery of uh, stage one and then stage two. Let me tell you, it is night and day, not so much a night and day difference in power, but how the power is spread across the RPM range is night and day better, at least in my opinion, uh, with the IS-38. The power difference is definitely significant. Um, we're talking probably roughly 40 to 50 wheel horsepower, so it's a notable jump. But the biggest difference is as you climb through the RPM range, things I look like an idiot now but I was gonna try and uh, turn the camera around and kind of use the tack as a reference but anybody that has the stock IS 20 or even on the Golf the IS 12 turbo you know how it's the meat of the power is between 3 and 5,000 rpm so short shifting is actually beneficial with those turbos with the IS 38 if you've driven any you know what I would call a more typical turbo car or even truck. Um, for instance, I had a big turbo 12 valve Cummins and um, like my friend's RB25 swap Nissan 240SX with the aftermarket turbo on it. The power band is a lot more linear and thus easier to control with the IS38. So where that big torque and power comes on at 3000, it's a lot more gradual and linear and it carries that basically that same progressive uh, power curve all the way up to redline or at least well into the 6,000 rpm range I know a lot of you guys aren't shifting this car at 7,000 rpm I'm generally shifting in the 6 to 6,500 rpm range and man does it just feel awesome up there where the IS 20 by about 5,800, it's pretty well petered out to, there's no point in revving beyond that point. So it's a little bit of a learning curve, daily driving, uh, you know, where you normally just downshift maybe two gears to shoot a gap in traffic. You might have to downshift three gears. Not a big deal, it's just something to get used to. And really it's easier on the car, or it should be easier on the car with more of a, a linear smooth power curve versus just all that torque down down low and I don't feel like it's really given up any torque so much as there's just more horsepower associated with the torque so it's I mean you're moving through the RPM range quickly but not as quickly as the kind of peaky power of the IS 12 and IS uh, 20 so uh, I'm sure a lot of people will ask, so I'll just cover it, why I stuck with APR. Bottom line is I already had so much money invested in APR, it would have been an even bigger investment to start over with another tuner, and I really have no reason to switch. APR has been rock solid, never had any issues with the car, 93,000 miles, and the track does see some abuse on the track hot lapping at the drag strip and mountain roads as well so uh, I know there's great cob tuners out there that put out a really good product arguably better than APR but for the difference in cost without E85 being a factor really it was kind of a no-brainer to stick with APR so there's only one E85 pump within about a 50 maybe even larger than that 
mile radius of where I live and my normal commute doesn't take me anywhere near it so it's really impractical for me to run an e-blender e85 and I feel like to justify a cop tune um, e85 would have to be a factor for me at least to be able to spend the extra money 93 to 93 there isn't a huge difference in what you're going to get out of these turbos without it being you know too hot of a tune so um, yeah, E85 was the second biggest factor in that for me. If I were to start over fresh and I lived somewhere where there was E85, or maybe even if there was just more E85 available here, I would have been leaning towards a DBV2 or an EQT hybrid turbo, which you can make good power on pump gas 91 if you live out in Communist California or uh, 93 here uh, sorry Californians I, I just don't understand the, all the restrictions they have out there don't take that personally but if I did have E85 to be able to really utilize that power potential of a larger turbo I for sure would have done it it's just again a lot more money for what may not be a, a very significant gain without the E85 so if you do live somewhere with corn whiskey, definitely check out the, check out those guys. Ed of EQT and Dan of DBV2 are awesome guys. And if not, or if you're just looking to keep things more on the mild side, but still have that more linear and more natural turbo car kind of a power band, um, big shout out to FCP Euro. They're always fast at their shipping. The website, like I've mentioned in other videos, can be a little bit glitchy, but I feel like I just kind of attract that kind of thing. I have problems with websites all the time, so it might be partially just my bad luck. But um, it's hard to beat a $1,000 OEM turbo. You know it's good quality, and they back it with their lifetime warranty. So shout out to them for um, making that a great option. Uh, there's lots of places that sell OEM, IHI, Audi, and Volkswagen turbos. They're the only ones I know of who are backing it up with a warranty. So, kind of a no-brainer. You'd be um, be leaving a law on the table to buy one from anyone else. So, uh, FCP, if you want to sponsor one of these videos and get with me on maybe a suspension project or two, I'm easy to contact. So, uh, we'll keep this short and sweet. I'll try to get some driving videos when I have some help, but I'm just kind of hanging out on lunch here at my real job. So subscribe if you haven't. I really appreciate everyone who's been subscribing lately. Um, on the quest for a thousand, we're not halfway there yet, but every every subscription helps. So comment below. Let me know what you guys want to see next, and thanks for watching.